So I was gonna try and do some sort of reverse T trick thing, but I've got work in about seven hours, so I gotta go to bed. <laughs> so let's do this. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Tenant, the latest Christopher Nolan film. This is the one that a lot of people have been curious to see whether it would come out this year. It was delayed several times, but it finally got released, at least in international slash Canadian theaters. And I like it. At the same time, I'm a little bit disappointed just in terms of hype. This is a film that apparently Nolan has been kind of batting around in his brain for the last 10 years. It's essentially a James Bond-esque film with a little bit of Jason Bourne and a bit of sci-fi elements dipped into it. Apparently, Nolan said that when he was making this film, he was going off of the assumption, more so the memory of what he remembered viewing the James Bond movies like, rather than actually basing it off of them. He usually watches some Bond films on a yearly, regular sort of set schedule, but supposedly he didn't do it for this film, which is the longest time he's ever gone without watching a Bond film of any sort, apparently, for him. So you can definitely see that inspiration. There is a few tidbits from different films here and there. Oddly enough, Living Daylights came to mind a few times in terms of the Russians, how the film kind of comes to its end, the whole idea of war encapsulated into a single event. And that single event in this film is time, the ability to inverse it, more so being able to go back through it. Essentially, if I were to summarize how time works in this film, it's the infinity shape, this. This is how time works in this film in terms of how they use it. And if you keep that in mind, it will make the film far more easy to understand because you're going to have a lot of exposition coming at you. Admittedly, it's a little bit better than, say, Interstellar's exposition. However, there are some elements of the film that they're using alternative means of talking, like talking through radios, talking through headsets, masks a lot, and it's really hard to understand. Admittedly, when I watched it in the IMAX, I actually couldn't understand a lot of shit that was being said in the film watching it a second time. Yes, I went and saw it twice in the same day because I didn't think I'd have a chance to watch it again anytime soon. Things are coming up. Watching it a second time definitely was able to help clear up a bunch of the audio cues. That didn't deter from how the film felt to me, but it was more so nicer to be able to hear the dialogue that I hadn't picked up on. And I do like elements of this film. I do like the idea of how time is being used in a practical sense. It does obviously dip a little bit into the thematic element, but you can tell that Nolan is trying to stay in a realm of realism, I guess, kind of in the same sense of how he did Interstellar. While that is cool, it's nowhere near used enough, in my opinion. There's only several elements in this film, a few here and there, that are actually really utilizing that entire idea of how time is inversed and there's only a few like oh that's kind of cool those are so few and far between in a film that is two and a half hours long you're kind of expecting a little bit more in terms of that as well as just how much money was put into this film obviously there's a lot of really cool locations there's some pretty cool setups in this film but i just felt that with how much money was supposedly put into this how much secrecy was put into this I was just expecting a little bit more. Maybe that's my own kind of own self hype, the the, the disappointment of that. But I, I do feel that this film is lacking a little bit, not just in terms of its payoff, but also just its execution. For instance, the first thing I can tell you right off the bat is that this film definitely suffers from not having Hans Zimmer there. I know George Johansson, who did the music for this, is he's, he's a good guy. He, he does some good work. I, he, it's just it's just not the same there's only like a couple of moments here and there that you really got that zimmer feel and then it just disappears i know that the music is trying to emulate the idea of time going both forward and backwards you can hear it and how it works but at the same time zimmer's done that shit since inception so you gotta bring something new to the table baby and for a movie that's two and a half hours long and i can only really point out to you three moments in time where i thought that the music was oh yeah that's pretty decent that's a little bit detracting. Also, I, I know that people like his new cinematographer and I liked his work for Interstellar and I was okay with it for Dunkirk. I couldn't stand it for a lot of moments in this film. I understand that this guy likes high aperture, or sorry, low aperture, in that it really gives that kind of cool, mysterious, kind of mystery vibe to it and I really enjoyed that in The Outsider. However, when you're trying to watch action, action scenes and several, several times everything's out of focus, I, I, I think you could have just notched it up a little bit. You don't have to stay at like 2.8 or 
fucking 1.8 i swear at half the time of the movie and that's unfortunate too because some of the action in this is not that bad in fact i think nolan has actually his best fight scene ever it's when uh, the main character john david washington is fighting these guys in a kitchen and it's literally the best fight scene he's ever done it's it's the most coherent you're able to see everything that's happening there's a good choreography with it i think it was actually pretty well done there are some gunfights in this as well which <sighs> nolan still has that issue of not really focusing on the action he's about the story the thematic sense of it which i can understand that's what he's is doing as a director but some of the gunfights in this especially towards the end are just guys running around waving guns and pulling the trigger and going pew, 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 and then stuff is exploding in the background particularly the climax of this film i felt was just so underwhelming because of how stupid it looked i understand that they were trying to make this big sort of grandiose sort of idea to it but it just it doesn't work. It just looks stupid. And I'm um, sorry to say that, but it it, 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 it kind of pulled me out, especially when I watched it the second time. The characters, though, are actually pretty decent. Pattinson does a great job. I liked John David Washington. You can hear his dad's voice so much, but he still brings a really fun character. It's probably the most quippiest character that Nolan's had in a long, long time. I actually really like Kenneth Branigan's villain character. I thought he was definitely an anchor in this films in terms of keeping her steady keeping her grounded but also just being a good weight for this thing before it flies off into silliness I, th I feel that just in terms of what we were expecting and what we were told and just what all this hype all this business for it i was kind of expecting a little bit more and i thought there would be a little bit more in terms of just the entire setup of how inversion was used sometimes it looks like the footage is literally just in reverse Sometimes it looks like there's a melding of the two, which is cool, but again, a lot of times there are parts of the film that just look like they just hit reverse on the playback and they just cut it in. That's it. I, I, I feel there was a little bit more. In the end, I think Tenant is a fun time. You are definitely going to be a little bit confused after watching it the first time. So like I said, just keep the infinity symbol in your mind in terms of how time works and you'll pretty much be able to follow it for the most general part. My favorite part for sure is in the middle of the film and it's an interrogation scene but it's also like a double interrogation. It's, it's really cool. I think that was the best use of it throughout the entire movie. Also the lack of having Lee Smith as his editor also hurt the film I feel because there were some editing choices that just totally ruins some surprises some definite intentional surprises of this film so I, I was kind of weirded out by that as well in the end i'm gonna give tenant a four out of seven just in terms of what i was expecting i was expecting a bit more from this movie i'll be honest i was kind of a little bit let down it's not a bad movie for sure i think that nolan maybe should kind of scale back um i will and give him props for doing a bond movie but in a different light i just You'd need the Zimmer, baby. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And I'll probably be doing a spoiler-filled review within the next few days or so, so make sure to keep your eye out for that. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.